Welcome back to Talk of the Town, and I'm happy to have with us the author of The Cross Gardener from Woodstock, Virginia. Interesting story on how he ended up there. Please welcome Jason F. Wright. Jason, it's great to have you with us in Talk of the Town. Thank you so much. Uh, Cross Gardener, this in its simplest form, the crosses, the monuments that we see along the highway is central to this, to this book. Yeah, you see them all over um, in the south, particularly here in the valley, it seems. Uh, where I live down in Woodstock, there are a number of them along Route 11, and I'm sure your viewers pass them every day, and they wonder what might have occurred there, and if someone lost their life, and how many, and what were the circumstances, and so the book goes a little bit into that, the kind of mythology of that. Yeah. We'll talk some more about the book here, but uh, when did you decide that uh, you wanted to write for a living? Oh, well... Third grade, I guess. <laughs> Third. I got in a little bit of trouble for taking one of my sister's library books from, she was in middle school at the time, and taking Sharpie to the cover so that it had my name on it instead of <laughs> the actual author's <laughs> name. Just so I could see what it would look like to have my name on the front of a book. And I got in a little bit of trouble for that. I remember my parents sitting me down and saying, you know, not a bad idea, but maybe masking tape over. And then you're right. <laughs> so that's work. what I did going forward. I probably still have some of those. I, in the third grade, I had a really good teacher, a fa fantastic teacher. I mean, it's been how many years since then? And still I remember her name, Mrs. Sampson, what she looked like, um, and how much she just encouraged me and said, you know, it's, it's early. You're in the third grade. But you could have a talent here. This could be something you could be good at if you work at it. And I had that voice in the back of my head through elementary and middle and high school and college. And then I got into my professional life and I was doing all kinds of other things far removed from writing full time. Right. And I had that voice in the back of my head. And finally, my wife sat me down about six or seven years ago and said, are you really doing what you said you wanted to, to do when you grew up? And if not, how can I help you? And that's kind of how we ended up here today. Wow. Wow, and you've lived everywhere. <laughs> lived, uh, lived a few places, born in uh, Missouri, lived in Chicago, lived a couple different places in Germany when I was a kid, spent two years in Brazil, spent some time in Utah, spent some time in Oregon. And then in 2000, we had two children at the time. Um, Virginia sort of called us home. I grew up in Charlottesville, and it's really, really nice to be back in the Commonwealth of Virginia. This is certainly home. Yeah, interesting story on how you ended up in Woodstock. That's right. We were living in Fairfax, the Chantilly area at the time, and I had put together uh, this outline for a book that would end up being called The Wednesday Letters. And I knew exactly what would happen and how it would happen, but I didn't know where it would happen. So I began to research online for areas close enough that I could drive to where I could do some research, where I could fit this um, or fix this fictional bed and breakfast. And I began to search online, and I found this place called Woodstock that, of course, I thought was where everyone got in their underwear and went sledding down hills <laughs> in the mud. I had no idea that there was another Woodstock. And I got in my car and I drove out. I got off uh, Route 11 in Strasburg and took Route 11 all the way to Harrisonburg and back. And both times as I passed through Woodstock, something just spoke to me and said, this is where the book needs to be based. So the book is sheer fiction, of course, the Wednesday letters. But it takes place in a real place, obviously, with a lot of um, local flavor and landmarks. And the book came out and started to do well. We had our fourth child, and my wife said, yeah, we don't fit anymore. Time for a new place. And I said, well, I know a little place out in uh, Woodstock we could check out. And six weeks later, we bought a house in Woodstock. I'll be darned. Yeah. Yeah, even though it's fiction, the local landmarks in this, talking about the Ben Franklin in Woodstock mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, the Burger King in, uh, in Strasbourg yeah. and the Food Lion, and, and it's uh, mentioning exits and so forth. And I thought, man, this is, you know, I know where that is. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's really neat to, uh, you know, to be able to identify with that. Also, in identifying with those crosses, you know, you drive by those and you see the names and you can't help but you just sort of utter a little silent prayer. Mm -hmm. You think about that person. You do. You think about their family. And uh, maybe without giving away too much, a little bit more about the cross gardener. Well, the book is about um, a young man who comes into the world in an unusual way. He's born on the side of the road after a car accident that doesn't really take place, of course, but takes place at a real place that you can go drive by and look at right now. It's right across the street from that Burger King you just mentioned in Strasburg at the Route 11 exit. Um, and his teenage mother dies in the accident. He's an orphan from day one. And he ends up in the Virginia adoptive system. And um, after a couple of years, he ends up being adopted permanently by an orchardist in Strasburg, who has this fictional orchard on Middle Road. I think you mentioned you know some folks on mm -hmm. Middle Road. 
Uh, and he grows up in this orchard, learns to love the apple business and what that means to be an orchardist. And uh, he experiences his own um, heartbreaks with some losses of family members, um, some workers on the farm who, who lose their lives. And when he finally it feels like he's now married and has a child and he's in a really good place, he experiences one more personal tragedy, the kind that would rock most of us. Um, and it, it's the kind of tragedy he's not sure he can overcome. This could be the one that kind of puts an end to him. One day, he visits the crash site where he has put two crosses, right? That's the way he decides to grieve, is by visiting these crosses. And when he visits this, uh, this memorial, he meets a man who calls himself the cross gardener. And he explains that he loves to, to care for these crosses and um, that they matter to him. It's his hobby to care for them. And these two men develop a friendship. And over the course of the book, the bulk of the book covers these two men getting to know each other. And over the course of the book, this, this sufferer, this man who's really grieving and mourning, learns some really interesting things about life and death. And I hope the readers learn a few interesting things as well. Fascinating. I loved it. I loved it. It's The Cross Gardener. And if you'd like to find out more, you can uh, find out more about uh, Jason. Your uh, website, www.jasonfwright.com. That's right. You got it. All right. Jasonfwright.com. And uh, from right here in Woodstock, New York Times bestselling author. And uh, some of his other books, Christmas Jars, The Wednesday Letters, and the very newest, The 17 Second Miracle. So we'll get you back and talk about some of these other books. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Jason Wright, thanks for being here. So good to be here.